cryptocurrency on Holochain, a visual explanation of how Holochain Mutual Credit Cryptocurrency prevents double spending. This is community content. I'm the creator of Comet. You can find my handle down there for the Mattermost chat. So first we're going to talk about the difference between Holochain and Holo. Holochain is a framework for creating distributed applications or dApps. Using this framework it is possible to create cryptocurrencies of many types. The most efficient type of currency that can be built on this is a mutual credit accounting system and it's what we're going to be looking at today. Holo is a dApp built using Holochain that implements a mutual credit accounting system. Holo is a Holochain application designed to incentivize people to host other Holochain applications. Now, uh, the difference between HOT and HOLOFUEL, uh, HOLO isn't running yet, so HOLOFUEL is currently represented by a HOLO token, which is a temporary cryptocurrency on Ethereum. When the HOLO application is brought online, HOT will be swapped one for one for HOLOFUEL. HOLOFUEL is the mutual credit accounting system that HOLO implements, and it is the currency that people will be paid in when they host HOLOCHAIN applications. Today we're going to be comparing two types of cryptocurrencies. The first will be the traditional cryptocurrency using blockchain technology. This is the technology behind Bitcoin, Ethereum, and most other cryptocurrencies today. And the second will be mutual credit accounting systems using Holochain. This is the technology that will power Holofuel. These are the participants of the network and blockchain, and some of these people have more capital than the others, and they can use this to buy powerful computers. These people are the miners, and they listen for transaction requests and create blocks of transactions. These are the blocks in blockchain. These blocks can then be turned into a sort of puzzle that the miners' computers must solve. These puzzles are hard to solve, but very easy to verify, and once one of the miners solves their puzzle, the block corresponding to the puzzle is considered valid, and the completed block is then sent around the network, and any miners still trying to solve their puzzles must discard their work and start again. The miner is then compensated for their work with a mining reward. But what happens when two miners solve a block puzzle at the same time? Both blocks are technically valid, but if we were to let them coexist, they would split the chain of blocks. This is called a fork, and double spending would be possible. So we must wait until we can find another block which builds on one of the previous ones. The shorter chain of blocks has less puzzles solved, and so is less valid than the longer chain. This is why there is a standard of six blocks for confirmation of a transaction, because it's extremely unlikely that we missed any longer chains in this about 60 minutes that it's going to take to create those six blocks. So in review, in Bitcoin and blockchain, there's wasted work. Only one miner wins, and other miners have to throw away their blocks and puzzles when one miner wins. There's wasted time. Each block puzzle takes about 10 minutes for the entire network to solve, and the standard is to wait until five other blocks are on top of another block to consider it definitely valid, and that wastes about an hour. And there's wasted space. Everybody is holding onto a list of everybody else's transactions, but really it would make more sense if everybody only held on to the transactions that matter to them. This is especially problematic for dApps, where they would store a lot of data, and if you store one megabyte of data in a contract, and you have a thousand people running the network, that would take up a total of one gigabyte of storage. And that's just not ideal. In Holochain, everyone is an equal participant. There are no miners. Every participant keeps their own personal ledger, which contains all of the transactions they've participated in. When two participants would like to transact, in this case Alice and Bob, they first make sure that the other's ledger is valid. They then both sign a transaction, which gets added onto their ledgers. Note that this is a digital signature, so it cannot be forged. The transaction is not done yet, however. How would Alice know if Bob didn't just erase his previous transaction where he spent the money that he's trying to give to Alice? So, from this transaction, a confirmation entry can be created. This is then distributed to a set of participants on the network based on the previous entries in their ledgers. These are called validators. Once these participants can be verified to be holding it, the transaction is finished. But what if someone were to be sneaky and tried to spend money they already had spent, as we alluded to in the previous slide? So, for example, Bob just erased his transaction with Alice and then tried to spend the same amount with Carol. Carol would not know that anything is wrong with Bob's local ledger, she would happily sign a transaction, and a confirmation entry would be created. However, when this confirmation entry is created, Carol will know which participants it should go to, because she knows of Bob's previous transactions. When these participants get this confirmation entry, they will notice that this transaction collides with one of Bob's previous transactions, they will refuse to hold it, and the transaction is dropped, and both Carol and Alice's money is safe. So in review in Holochain, 
There is no wasted work. Transactions and confirmation entries are only signed by the people they relate to. Everybody doesn't need to know about every single transaction in the network. They only need to know about the transactions that are relevant to them. There's no wasted time. Transactions occur between the participants and not the entire network. Multiple transactions can be happening at the same time. That's concurrency. And there's no wasted space. Transactions are held onto only by the people they're relevant to, and transactions are validated by a small number of deterministically chosen participants. Here's a little comparison table. In terms of throughput, as we mentioned, Holochain has parallel transactions, so there's really no upper limit to the amount of transactions per second that Holochain can do. It's sort of similar to how there's no upper limit to the amount of emails that can be sent on the internet per second. And in blockchain, there is a need for global consensus, and that limits the throughput of any blockchain system. In terms of reward, Holochain does not actually need a reward. The only reason that blockchain needs a reward, which is miners getting rewards for creating blocks or stakers or whatever they use, is because blockchain is just not efficient enough to have people use it on its own merits. And with waste... Holochain produces basically no waste, while with blockchain there is a waste of time because of global consensus, proof of work wastes power, uh, and global consensus wastes space because you have to have a list of every transaction if you want to validate the entire chain. If you'd like to learn more about Holochain, you can visit holochain.org for more information. You can find developer information at developer.holochain.org, and we'd really like you to share your Holochain knowledge and spread the word. It's a really great framework, and we're excited to bring it to you. Thank you for your time.